I'm Iowa State men's basketball coach Fred Hoiberg, and you're watching Big12Sports.com. Welcome back from the holidays and welcome to this week's Big 12 Report presented by Dr. Pepper. I'm Wendell Barnhouse, Big12Sports.com correspondent, and this week my co-host, Cassandra Novi. Well, the Big 12 has been having great success in their bowl game so far. The league boasts a 6-1 record, which is the best in the nation. Those six wins and one loss are also the most wins and fewest losses the league has had in its history. And I guess we probably should have seen this coming considering how successful the Big 12 was in non-conference play. The Big 12 won 90% of its games. Uh, they set a conference record for best winning percentage. You count the 6-1 and one bowl record and add that into the non-conference schedule, that's a 33-4 and four record against outside competition, which I'd say is pretty good. I'd say so too. Well, here's a look back at highlights from the seven bowl games. Double pass. Pass looking for the end zone. Man is wide open. Touchdown, Missouri. West Kemp with the grab. And a QB will keep it. Franklin the touchdown. Fourth trip in the red zone for the Tigers. And they're going to get their fourth score. Touchdown, Kendall Lawrence. Orthodox looks to get from Manny Diaz. Maynard shuffled those feet for a while. And for it traffic gets picked off. Front rate digs. Brown has it. This time they'll reverse and ship. But he's going to throw it again to Ash. Ash, touchdown, Texas. And what else would you expect? Pressure coming on Maynard. That Maynard sack. Ball is loose. Zach's fighting for it, and it looks as if Texas has come up with its fourth turnover of the night. Marquise Goodwin's the fastest of the 22 on the field now. Goodwin deep into Cal territory. The 14, 118 yards passing in trouble here. And doesn't go down. Griffin inside the 10. Heisman touchdown. Well, hand it off to Gannaway. A huge hole. The race is on. Gannaway inside the 40. He'll take it 89 yards. Touchdown. Gannaway first down and more. Exclamation point. Intercepted by Jamel Fleming, and he's chopped down inside the 15-yard line. Where are the linebackers come in as part of this package as well, leading the way for another touchdown. 11th rushing touchdown of the year for Blake Bell. Here's Bell trying to turn the corner. He walks in untouched. He is a touchdown scoring machine for the Sooners. It's just power football. I mean, I don't know what else to say. They turn the whole Iowa program around. There's Bell into the end zone. It'll be tricky this end of Yankee Stadium for 41 yards. He knocks it straight through. That's the snap down, the boot away. Zach Geyer is two for two. It was correct as Woody breaks free. And Woody breaks a tackle and scores. And suddenly, it's a one-possession game. Swope out on the edge. It's a block downfield. Stays in bounds. Spins to the five. First and goal at the goal line. Moving the pile into the end zone is Molina for the a and touchdown. On second down, taking a shot for the end zone. Fuller's got it. Touchdown, Aggies. Takes it to the house. Brandon Whedon throws. 
Blackman again breaks a tackle. And here he goes. Running away from the defense. Injured and all. It's a touchdown for Oklahoma State. And he has one. Touchdown. Weeding down the same block, but again a touchdown. West Harlan, the holder, to win it. It is good! Oklahoma State, with a flag down, has won the Tostitos Fiesta Ball. Well, from all that great action we've seen so far, hopefully Kansas State will add some more highlights this Friday when they face Arkansas in the Cotton Bowl. And Kansas State will be trying to cap a great season so far and win its first bowl game since 2002. Uh, the Wildcats' only two losses came to Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. Now, those are the two top passing attacks in the Big 12, and that might be a problem against Arkansas, which ranks 13th nationally in passing offense. Quarterback Tyler Wilson has thrown for 22 touchdowns with just six interceptions. He's got plenty of speedy receivers who can make plays. Now, Kansas State's best defense for the Razorbacks is to be selfish with the football. And with quarterback Colin Klein, the Wildcats can control the ball and the clock by running, and I think they've got a chance because Arkansas's run defense is 80th in the nation. Well, from everything we've seen in the past bowl games, I'm sure there's been something that's been shout-out worthy. What do we have for shout-outs this week? Well, my first shout-out is going to go back to that wild and crazy Alamo Bowl game. Now, Baylor and Washington put up a basketball-worthy score. It was 67-56 in favor of the Bears. And the reason Baylor won that game, I think, was because of their uh, offensive rebounding. No, no, seriously. I'm going to give a game ball to Terrence Ganaway, the Baylor running back. He had 200 yards rushing and five touchdowns. Now, during Baylor's six-game winning streak to close the season, Ganaway was a force. He scored 13 touchdowns, averaged 148 yards rushing per game, and over seven yards per carry. He was a real big reason why Baylor had so much success. Let's talk about some hoops for shout-out number two as conference play is underway for both men's and women's basketball. Going into Big 12 play, the men have the nation's best winning percentage versus nationally ranked opponents, second best overall winning percentage, and the second fewest losses of any conference in the country. The women lead the nation in non-conference winning percentage and fewest number of losses with just 15. Now there are four undefeated teams remaining in Division I men's basketball and two are in the Big 12, Missouri and Baylor. And Baylor is the only Division I school in the nation with both men's and women's basketball teams undefeated. They've got a combined record of 27-0. My third and final shout-out goes to Oklahoma State. They closed out the best season in school history. The Big 12 Conference champions won the Fiesta Bowl with an exciting 41-38 overtime defeat of Stanford. And we thought the Fiesta might be one of the best bowls, and it was. And after the game, Coach Mike Gundy said the team had dedicated the game to the four victims of the plane crash that occurred the day before the Cowboys game at Iowa State. On the victory stand after the game, Gundy handed the Fiesta Bowl trophy to Sherry Butke, the widow of Oklahoma State coach Kurt Butke, who died in the crash, along with Cowgirls assistant coach Miranda Serna and two others. It was a heartwarming and classy gesture that made a thrilling victory even more satisfying. It definitely did. Well, that wraps things up for this week. To stay connected on all things Big 12 throughout the week, you can hit us up on Twitter or find us on Facebook. For Wendell Barnhouse, I'm Cassandra Novi. We'll see you next week.